look what came in the mail. More storage. And we can always use more storage and more hard drives. And this NAS is from Asus Store. And they asked me to check it out and to connect uh, retro computers to it. Because they uh, improved uh, compatibilities with retro uh, uh, operating systems. This NAS is way more than just a NAS. It's running Linux and it has a lot of functions. So in this video we are gonna explore what this little box can do. Hi, my name is Victor Bart and welcome to Retro Machines where we are gonna try out this nice NAS and we even cut hard drives with it. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. If you want your circuit board design realized and printed, you should check out PCBWay. Starting prices as low as $5 for one or two layer design with worldwide shipping. Place your order now, links in the description. This is an Asus Store Locker Store 4 Gen 2, the AS6704T. The no compromise 2.5 gigabit NAS because this NAS has two 2.5 gigabit ports. We have a quad core Celeron running at 2 gigahertz with turbo to 2.9, USB 3.2 Gen 2s, 4 M2 uh, slots. We have even an HDMI port on this NAS, uh, the two uh, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports. And we have 4 GB DDR4 SO DIMMs and it's upgradable, there's even a slot free. And we have 3 year warranty. Uh, Asus Store Data Master, Lifestyle Applications, Business Applications, Surveillance Applications, Cross Platform Support, so Windows, Apple, Linux, even a mobile app. We have 4 SATA drive base with removable slats, but we need to use some screws so it's not toolless. A USB port on the front, a power button here, a display, four buttons here, and uh, let's remove the plastic. And the plastic here on the buttons. So now it reveals a glossy look. So probably, yeah, fingerprints. <laughs> On the rear we have a 12 cm fan, so probably good cooling and uh, not uh, loud. The two uh, Ethernet ports on 2.5 gigabit. Here we have a USB uh, port, HDMI, power in and here we have even an expansion slot. Because if we open the NAS, you can see here an expansion slot with uh, a uh, riser board for 4 M.2 SSDs. So we can even put SSD storage in this NAS, but if we want to do the 10 gigabit upgrade, we also need this port, so this riser then goes out, and then we can install the Asus 10 gigabit uh, network card. I might gonna upgrade this NAS to 10 gigabit or yeah, I just need to see what option I will take. It's SSDs or 10 gigabit, but not both. And I would prefer to have one of those ports here, just 10 gigabit, so you don't have to choose. But they chose for 2.5 gigabit, which is probably fine for most users. I just gonna take it apart. I want to see the motherboard. <laughs> Oh, and here behind this uh, flap we have a uh, memory slot where we can upgrade to more memory. I think it supports up to 16 gigabytes of memory. So I might gonna upgrade that just for fun. So this is the M.2 uh, riser and the PCI slot is a Gen 3 I think. I'm curious <laughs> if I put this in my workstation what will happen. Let me know in the comments if that would work on a uh, 2013 uh, Xeon. I mean, if I can add 4 M.2s, that would be very fast. Hmm, don't try this at home. Because you can take it apart. But there are a lot of screws and you need to take the whole rear off and the SATA backplane out and the front. Uh, 
maybe if I directly remove the rear I didn't have to remove the front but at least we can now see we have a good metal chassis good build quality no sharp corners so yeah here are the display PCB here the front uh, PCB with the USB and the power button the SATA backplane the rear fan it's a normal connector so in the future when a fan fails you can replace it but it's good that you can take it apart so you can also repair it in the future if needed so here we have the little motherboard with a passive heatsink for the CPU uh, here we have a normal uh, CR2032 battery we have two memory slots one here one here so it's not sold on the motherboard so we can uh, upgrade it in the future and I probably want to go to 16 gigabyte because this NAS can run virtual machines so then 16 gigabyte is very useful and yeah, not much going on for the rest on the motherboard, but it looks like good build quality. And here we have a chip that looks like a memory uh, chip. So maybe they stored Linux directly on this chip, but not sure. And yeah, let's uh, put this back together and test it out. I found out how, <laughs> how it's supposed to go just remove the back with the fan remove the SATA back plane remove SSD expansion and then you can slide out the motherboard from here and change the memory stick here so yeah you don't have to remove the front panel or the PCBs there it was easier than I was uh, doing it. So here we have the accessories box, power cable, just with a normal Euro connector. And here we have the power brick itself from Delta, 12 volt 90 watts. So it's pretty low power solution. Two network cables, always handy. One back of screws, two back of screws. So here we have the quick start guide. And it has like uh, instructions for the 2 bay unit, 4 bay unit. 6 bay unit, even an 8 bay and a 10 bay unit, a uh, rack mount, uh, 1 U, 4 bay, 2 U, 12 bay, <laughs> 3 U, 16 bay. Oh, that I would like to try out in my home server rack someday. That would be cool. Uh, let's see, what are the instructions? 1. Remove the bay, put an hard drive in, put the hard drive back, connect it. Do I need a quick start guide for that kind of instructions? <laughs> so Seagate provided four 6 terabyte uh, Iron Wolf NAS hard drives. I looked up the hard drive and the hard drive is 6 terabyte running at uh, 5400 RPM, 265 uh, megabyte of cache. The hard drives are pretty low power, the running average is 5.3 watt and the idle is 3.4 watt. And if I compare to the 6 terabyte 7200 RPM CK NAS drives, uh, the average is 8.1 watts and the idle is 7.2 watts. So if you want to make a low power solution, go for the 5400 RPM drives. But if you do a lot of video editing, I would prefer the 7200 RPM. But the average throughput is only 20 megabytes higher with the 7200 RPM version. So that's not much difference. The drive base also support 2.5 inch SSDs. Let's give you some highlights what this NAS can do. The no compromise 2.5 GB NAS, enthusiast 
create nuts with two, four or six bays. You can even bond the two two and a half gigabit Ethernet ports to five gigabit, ten gigabit Ethernet card, but then you lose the SSD uh, functionality. Uh, da, 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 da. The ultimate live streaming tool, virtualization solution, wake on LAN, wake on one, snapshot center is a new feature for Asus Store NAS devices to utilize uh, butter FS and ice QC volumes to take snapshots, create the ultimate home multimedia center, easy docker development, uh, comprehensive surveillance systems. I think it was up to 44 cameras. But first of all, we gonna just uh, turn it on and configure it as a NAS and see how that goes. Let's power it on. Starting system, please wait. And I already plugged in a network cable. It really looks like there's just a Linux distribution starting up. Booting servers. Initialize NAS. Okay, I have up and down buttons here. A back button and an enter button. Delete all data. That's fine, because there was no data on it. To set up the NAS is pretty simple. You go to the IP address, port 8000. And that's not clear in the quick start guide, so just go to here. If you follow the quick start guide, you need to install some software from Asus and then it detects the NAS and connects to the IP address with the port 8000. So just go to the IP address port 8000. Also what was not clear in the quick start guide, that was the username and password, but it is simple admin, admin. Also, if you uh, install SSH and go to login, you can use admin admin. And now you have a nice interface to set up the server or to check the activity monitor. Uh, let's go to memory. So we now used 1.39 gigabyte of memory, uh, one and a half gigabyte is cached, and we have uh, now 744 megabyte of memory free. So I think if you want to run VMs on this machine, what's possible, you need to upgrade the memory and then you can add more memory to the VMs. And installing the virtualization option is super simple. Go to the App Central and here you have top apps, latest apps, oh database for example. We can uh, install some databases, pay, pay my admin. So you have a lot of things that you can control on this uh, NAS. Uh, download, transmission for example, let's install that. And super simple to install and remove apps on this way. It automatically downloads it, it configures it. So by default there is not much installed, but you can easily install what you need. So it also doesn't use up any resources. And now you have transmission installed and here the virtual box that I installed earlier. And now you can simply uh, press on new and make a virtual machine. And here in the settings, of course the network settings, all kinds of options that you can choose. So you have a lot of control on this NAS, what you can do. And here by services, so Samba chairs. Apple chairs, NFS chairs, FTP, web dev, web server terminal for the SSH, rsync server, TFTP, SNMP, SFPT and reverse proxy. So a lot of options. So I really like that there's so much possible with this box. It's basically a full Linux server and not just a basic NAS where you can set up some shares and some users but you can really have this as your home network server and connect m laptops on it and run services on it. I think it's a really great box. Let's now explore the most important function of the NAS and that's the storage. So we have four six terabyte hard drives and the standard configuration is a four disk RAID 5 with Butter FS file system, which is a Linux variation of ZFS, but you have more options than this. So let's go to volume, let's remove this, and then in the advanced setup, we can select a single drive, a Yatebot, just a bunch of disks. So you can just add four random drives and make it one big volume, no redundancy, RAID 0, 
to uh, stripe them all for a uh, high speed but that's the stupidest thing that you can do with a NOS like this rate 1 so two drives work as one one can fail rate 5 which is the best solution for a four disc a unit like this so you have the capacity of three drives and one can fail or rate 6 then you have the capacity of two drives and two can fail but it doesn't matter which of the drives fails because it's striped over all the drives but if you have this NAS with a 6 bay I would uh, say go rate 6 because then you have a 4 drive uh, rate 6 with 2 redundancy or you can do rate 10 so you have 2 mirrors and then striped but I think rate 6 is a better solution because then it doesn't matter which one will fail and you still keep your data. Let's uh, make a RAID 5, uh, select all the drives and you can set up a spare drive or not. So you can choose extended 4 or ButterFS and then it supports also snapshots. So let's go ButterFS and now the deleting the old folder and making the new one. And what I really like that you have so much control over how you configure it. It's not just one setup that it is standard but you can really set it up as you like. And if you add the SSDs here you can make them into a separate volume on the NAS. So Tux, what do you think about this NAS? I like this NAS because it runs Linux and you can run a lot of services and apps. For example I like that it can runs virtual machines. But can I have more memory please? And in the current times it is great that it is a low power solution. So please make more videos testing it with peasant operation systems like Windows 98 and 2000. Victor asked me as an Intel engineer to check out this NAS. OMG damn what a peasant CPU. I hope this Celeron has cash. If you want this NAS check out my Amazon links. If you like to support me you can check out my Patreon and get access to my Discord server.